We thank you that you have not forsaken us. We thank you for always reminding us to walk with you, O Lord. We thank you, Father Almighty, for waking up, for allotting our hearts to all the verses in the world today. We thank you, Father Almighty, you have not left us to slumber and go astray from the path of salvation. As we are here gathered this morning before you, Lord, to listen to your words, O Lord. We be seated, Father Almighty, to open our hearts, O Lord. Give us our spirit and hearts of understanding to understand you, to build a solar relationship with you, O Lord. Let us do not forsake you, Father Almighty. Let us walk in your path. We thank you, Father Almighty, this morning. We beseech you, Father, to sanctify your message and know the tongue that will deliver it to Lord. Speak through me. Speak to us, O Lord. At the end of this day, Father Almighty, let us dedicate our life to you to be a new Christian in you, O Lord. Amen. Let us be an ambassador for you, O Lord. Let them see Christ in us. That anywhere we go, we may be an ambassador for you. We thank you, Father Almighty, for this opportunity we have. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like um, every one of us to have our Bible with us as we shall be referring to all the passages in the Bible because this morning, the message that we are giving this morning is very important. It's a message that is addressing exactly the vices that are happening in the world today. All the vices that we are witnessing in our own eyes is definitely an evidence of the advent of the end times that we are all witnessing. And all Christians must be alert. We must never slumber. We must be awake now. We, should, we must be watchful and pray. As the theme denotes, walking with God in a sinful world walking with God in a sinful world. The scripture reading also is coming from Ephesians 2, 10 to 22. Most of the scriptures in the Holy Bible today, we are written originally in Hebrew or in Greek, while some New Testament doctrines were compiled in Latin. The traditional, as we read in verses eight and nine of the Genesis, and they had the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, We are a thou. The Bible is here making us to understand that when you become the friend of God, God will come down in human form to visit you. Walk with me, walk with him, and share your companionship. In Genesis 3, 10 to 13, and he said, I heard a voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself, and he said, Who told thee that thou art naked? Art thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gave to me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God called unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. He she deceived me, and I did it. From that time on, the first humans who had become the first sinners no longer walk with God. But they are walking, not just out of the garden, but by and with another spirit. The same word walk is also used by Satan how he goes about doing his own thing. As also we read in Job 1.7, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Today, in our adulterous and sinful world, we are all now witnessing all the abominable sins committed by world when God in his anger destroys Sodom and Gomorrah for their abominable lifestyles. And this brings us this morning into asking ourselves what was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? And how is it different from marriage of same-sex gender? We now know as gay and lesbianism that has now been legalized in America. 
The biblical account of Solomon and Gomorrah is recorded in Genesis chapter 17, 18, 19. Genesis chapter 18 records the Lord and two angels coming to speak with Abraham. The Lord informed Abraham that the outcry against Solomon and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous as we read in verses 22 to 23 of chapter 18. Record Abraham pleading with the Lord to have mercy on Sodom and Gomorrah because Abraham's nephew Lot and his family lived in Sodom. Genesis chapter 19 records the two angels disguised as human men visiting Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot met angels in the city square and urged them to stay at his house. The angels agreed. The Bible then informs us, before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to, to Lord, we are the men who came to you tonight. Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. The angels then proceed to blind all the men of Sodom and Gomorrah and urge Lot and his family to flee from the cities to escape the wrath that God was about to deliver. Lot and his family flee the city, and then the Lord rained down burning sulfur of Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the city. In light of the passage, the most common response to the question what was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? Is that it was homosexuality. That is how the term sodomy came to be used to refer to anal sex between two men, whether consensual or forced. Clearly, homosexuality was part of why God destroyed the two cities. The men of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to perform homosexual gang rape on the two angels who were disguised as men. At that time, or at the same time, it is not biblical to say that homosexuality was the exclusive reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were definitely not exclusive in terms of the sins in which they enjoyed, in which we are also experiencing today in our life. Today, all these sins are no longer considered as abomination, but it is now considered normal for same-sex male or female gender to get married and live as gay couples. Are we not walking away from God? Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because God could not find up to five righteous men still walking with God. But America is still righteous and is still being speared from the wrath of God because of the Christian believers like you and I. And this is why all servants of God at this time must not sleep or get tired but be alert to warn all the followers of Christ at this time of the advent of the end times as Satan is now busy roaming the world and corrupting all governments of the world who the Bible referred to as wickedness in high places to turn people away from walking with God. Now, here we are. We are. And in which category of Christians do you find yourself individually? Are you working with God? By the time we finish analyzing each category of Christian pilgrims, we shall know in our hearts to which group we belong. Remember, each result or each faith in your life is as a result of your self chosen faith and no use blaming our misfortunes on anybody. There are two main categories of pilgrims, both reaching on the road, the junction where the road divides into right and left and never to meet again. And each road is full of many activities. One road is the road of those who walk with God or walk with God or are walking with God. Why the other road is those who forsake their work with God. When you work with God, where does it lead to? And when you forsake to work with God, where also does it lead to? 
And these are what we shall be examining today. And my prayer 